It is another weekend preview here for Los Lindos Racecourse. It is the weekend of Saturday, April 9th and 10th. We're officially into the spring season. The two years already underway. And uh, pleased to start, start the show here with Mike Rona, the voice of Los Lindos. Michael, before we get into uh, what we want to, what race you want to review, I gotta, I gotta give all ourselves a little bit of a, of a, a, a knucklehead on the head. All four of us had different top selections <laughs> in that fourth race on Saturday night. Yeah, was it Saturday. Yeah, Saturday night, and we all flunked. We did not pass a test. <laughs> a horse. We none of Orlando, myself, you, Christopher Wade, all four of us, different top selection. And a different horse ended up winning. Yeah, I uh, mentioned last week how open that race was, yes. and uh, pretty much it it looked like it had stumped Ed Berg up to some extent too. He put forth a very open morning line. There were five horses that that he had pegged as serious contenders, and uh, it was the fifth one, yes. <laughs> the, the the one that neither of us. Uh, <laughs> plonked for that got the chocolates which is quite sensational yeah. um my my horse nevada charles was a decent second at five to one but had every chance mm -hmm. uh the the horse to watch out of the race was stuck in probate yes the three horse that might have been your choice as i yes, recall it was. yeah uh that was a very unlucky performance and a good gallop out and uh if he wasn't on my watch list prior to last saturday night rest assured he is now and he's one to follow next time out, I would think. Yeah, we all kind of joked around uh, because we were uh, we're celebrating, giving a toast to uh, photographer Scott Martinez, who was retiring this past weekend. We got together at Burghardt's after the race on Saturday night. That's where yeah. we all kind of joked around with each other that we all had a top selection and we all flunked the test. But uh, welcome Over back. four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it won't be the first time, won't be the last time. All right, well, let's talk about <laughs> Saturday's card. And uh, we begin, we're going to start the card because you want to take a look at a horse immediately in race number one, right? Yes, I'm going to get into stride quickly for the Saturday action, looking at a thousand yard race. The first on the program, a maiden for three-year-olds and up. And uh, the debut of Crosskirk, who's number eight in this event, back on the 26th of February caught my eye, uh, as did the uh, performance in the same race of another horse called Perry Street. And they happened to clash next time out yeah. and perry street was able to beat cross kirk so this will be cross kirk's third start and it could be the charm yeah let's take a look at that replay here courtesy of los and we'll take a take a look at the full race replay cross kirk was stuck on the inside right yes slowly away from the inside and perry street also misses the start in the white colors uh, they're both right back at the tail, and they both put forward good performances. You'll see a nice mid-race move from Crosskirk in the blue silks, splitting horses and and really making an impact in the middle part of the race. Um, and Perry Street had somewhat of a checkered run down the back stretch. Helicopter Pilot uh, is the number six horse in this field, the green and white colours leading into the turn, and he's in this first race on Saturday night as well. But uh, despite the fact that Helicopter Pilot finished just in front of Crosskirk, I thought there was a lot more merit in Crosskirk's debut outing here in the blue colours. He, uh, he might have just flattened out a little bit in the stretch, but he kept trying. And uh, after that mid-race move following the slow getaway, I had him marked as, as a horse to follow. There he is, third about a half length behind Helicopter Pilot. He had every chance in his second start when Perry Street won that race. But uh, even though he was beaten four lengths, he in turn finished four lengths clear of the rest of the field yeah. in pretty decent time. And I think that this is a nice spot for him from one of the outside posts. Pat Vischer, the trainer, enjoyed uh, a great triumph winning the Los Alamitos Oaks recently with Sweet Tess. She puts the polish on Cross Kirk. I'm interested to see Pat removing the blinkers for this third start. I like the fact that Ricardo Ramirez is uh, retaining the mount. He's been the regular jockey. And at four to one on the morning line, against some horses who've had some chances, Helicopter Pilot has had seven minor placings from 10 starts. Quiet Forest number six has had uh, eight minor placings, is it, from uh, from a dozen starts? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've had their chances. This is a more lightly raced horse, Crosskirk, with some upside. Ketchup certainly is a pace factor from the outside draw, and uh, he'll be in the mix fighting it out every step of the way. But at the four to one, Crosskirk will do me very nicely. I like that, Ed. So, uh, Crosskirk, we'll take a look at that first start uh, for Crosskirk. Getting off the rail. Actually, last time was in gate five in a field of six. So, more towards the outside once again here tonight. Thank you for that replay and that analysis. Let's see if Crosskirk can break much better here on Saturday night. Good on you, mate. Good luck, Huru. The traditional $2 pick six at Los Alamitos is always a great bet. And our pools continue to increase on Saturday, January 8th. A one-night carry over $34,000 led to a huge total pool of over $184,000. And our $10,000 pick six promo on eligible Sunday nights consistently resulted in total pools of over $60,000. And the payouts can be tremendous. And remember, on Sunday nights when there's not a carryover, Los Alamitos is continuing to add $10,000 to the pick six pool. The traditional $2 pick six. A great bet. A great deal. Always at Los Alamitos. Yeah, the tradition of two-dollar pick six has been a good, well-received in the last, uh, actually, since we started that, since Los Alamitos started that promo. But uh, the pools have been very, very strong the last couple of weeks here, most notably a couple of weekends ago with a nice uh, double carryover. All right, uh, please do now join in Christopher Wade, your Los Alamitos analyst there on site, on the paddock, through the simulcast signal every single night. And, uh, Chris, what race are you going to take us here for Saturday? I'm going to take a look at the finale. Uh, on my numbers, uh, the finale, it's a very, very closely matched affair. I got uh, in that in, in, the, in, the final, in the final race, from top to bottom, the whole field figures within half a length to three quarters of a length. So I'm going to take a look at a stab horse, horse who lost all chances. It's been much troubled the last two starts, but has ability, was claimed uh, by Ricardo again a couple starts. But both starts for Ricardo, the horse had nothing but trouble, but – I did have some run that last start, broke slow, got bumped back and was crossed and took up, angled in and finished pretty well under a hole far back. So it was a better than looked effort. And on my numbers, the horse figures very, very close to the affair. So maybe uh, with a clean start, the horse could upset the apple cart at eight to one in the program. Uh, could be right there along those lines and uh, spice up the late pick four, exact as or trifectas. Really skin what stab look in that finale as a bombs away play. Let's uh, bring up this replay. He was the number three horse this night. Uh, he was yeah. uh, against 16 claimers, so he's dropping in class. But what did you see this night? Well, he got fractious as per usual, but he uh, broke slow. He got bumped back and close quarters and took up, lost uh, a good amount of ground, and obviously is racing lane away from the gate and and was under a little bit of a hand shove midway. But he angles in right here about here, and he finishes pretty well under a hold. I know it doesn't look all that impressive, but he's a nice size horse and uh, wasn't really asked to run, but – uh, the harder that rider pulls on that eye, the more I count, the faster I go because a quarter horse length is 0.14, and I gave the horse, oh, my gosh, like around 50 trouble. So with everything factored in, the numbers is not too bad, and this horse can just break with the field and have a clear path to run. He could uh, be a big player in the exotics uh, in the finale or might even blow up the tote board and spice up that late pick four and or pick six. And if you're looking at – Pretty much every horse in this in this spot, their best effort is in the 50s, 70s, 1580s. There's not a lot of separation, so it might come down to a uh, to trip here, because it, you have a lot of horses that are, don't have a ton of separation as far as what they previously done at 300 yards. No, I just have uh, everybody in the field figures right on top of each other on my numbers. The ring factor because a troubled track variant, and this horse could just break with the field. It could be a bombs away play in the finale and spice up the pick four, pick six, and all the exotics. All right, so thank you for that uh, selection. Bet three eagle, a long shot play for Chris here in race number ten. That is going to be a uh, made a consume me a conditional claiming event going for a tag of twelve thousand five hundred. All right, so in addition to Los Lamitos selections on the front of the paddock, you do analysis for the night last program, and I know you're you're tackling Remington Park this week, right? Yeah, Remington Park. Uh, we we doing races four through twelve. Uh, they're the Latin programs where I help the public along with some prices, and I kind of like a couple of horses, uh, first time starters. There in the eighth event, a horse by eight political chick V. The horse showed a stack of ability in the workout and uh, has a big look here. Three to one. If I get three to one, I'll be very, very happy because I think this horse is a big look there in that uh, debut in the course of the ninth uh, ninth race. The horse on the outside, always interesting. Another horse who did show me some ability in that workout at five to one. I think the horse got a look. So in those uh, eighth and ninth race, I think we got nice chances in both those, uh, both those events at Remington Park. All right, thank you for the selections. I wrote them down. I wrote them down, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep a lookout for those runners as well. So thank you for the analysis, and we'll see you out there uh, this weekend. Los Alamitos. 
yeah, you guys have a good night, and we got some nice races coming this weekend, and uh, some good looking babies as well. Welcome back to the program here for uh, Los Amigos. It is April 9th and April 10th this weekend here. Saturday and Sunday. Now joined by Professor G. Orlando Gutierrez. Professor, I joked around with Michael Warner to start the show that we all failed the test. That race number four on Saturday night all had top different selections and we couldn't pick the winner. We flunked the test on Saturday. <laughs> Shame, 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 shame on shame. all of us. <laughs> shame, all of us. And uh, the car, we kind of joked each other and gave each other some a hard time because we, we got together after the races to celebrate uh, right. Scott Martinez, who was retiring, our, our longtime photographer. Uh, but uh, uh, something that I did not know in all those years, and it kind of makes sense, but he had never presented the trophy. And you got him to present the trophy that, that night, and you told me that he, he looked like a seasoned pro out there presenting the trophy. Wrong, wrong, <laughs> complete opposite of it, right? Um, I had a feeling that he had never presented the trophy. I, I've been here since 1993, and, you know, we've never had him present the trophy. He's always on the other side of the camera, of course, yeah. taking the photos uh, of the of the owner celebrating. But it was his final weekend. We're going to miss him a lot. But it was also an opportunity to kind of highlight him and give him, you know, give him some of the spotlight. He's been a part of Los Alamitos uh, since the – mid 1980s he's been the photographer of every single running of the uh, los alamitos two million futurity he's photographed uh every running of the champion of champions since 1987 so uh you know a big a big part of uh of the los alamitos family uh scott martinez and it was a special time to you know get him there in the winner's circle presenting the trophy and he completely looked like somebody who had never presented a trophy it's such an easy <laughs> job but he was partly very excited i think and you know yeah. he was he was just running around like walking around <laughs> like telling the trainer where to put the horse and you know it was kind of fun but uh, we had a fun time uh yeah. just uh spending that time with scott martinez and of course uh, uh yourself michael rona chris wade uh, a lot of his friends that work in the tv department here at los alamitos and some in the racing office all joined us after the races, spend some time at Burgars, just uh, you know, hanging out with uh, Scott Martinez. We'll certainly miss him, but uh, the beat rolls on here at Los Alamitos. We're getting ready for another good weekend of racing. Uh, longtime assistant in the photo department, Amber Mendez, she'll be uh, uh, stepping up and taking the job as uh, uh, our track photographer here. And looking forward to uh, continuing seeing some great racing action photos uh, here from our photo department. And I saw that you you did an article for him in the Los Angeles website, and also uh, for print in the Nightlines. And one of the, you know he mentioned that one of his funnest, the funnest photographs to do was the ones that he did off site at the farms, at at vessels, uh, for owners, trainers. So uh, he did a lot of the uh, photography for a lot of these breeders and owners off the track as well. Yeah, uh, every so often we'd have a stallion come into the infield here at Los Al and get some special photos there. Uh, I remember he took some photos of, uh, of a horse that uh, John Bassett uh, trained here at Los Alamitos that I believe was going to Stallion. Uh, took some great shots of a political time with uh, with Juan Aleman. Uh, he shot all the uh, horse sales here at Los Alamitos, yeah. taking photos of all those great yearlings here at Los Al. Um, so yeah, he's done a little bit of everything. Of course, the weenie dog races. He shot yes. a lot of those weenie dog uh, photos. Uh, we yeah. have a lot of fun, uh, <laughs> you know, playing with those photos on our website uh, for our commercials and so forth. So uh, definitely miss Scott Martinez. A uh, uh, special shout out to to the to the appetizer menu at Burgarts. Oh, yeah. I don't know where you found, but those chicharrones. They have some chicharrones uh, as an app. They were terrific. I, I, I couldn't put him down. And the salsa that was coming with the chair on it was terrific. I, I enjoyed it. It, it. They blew my mind. I mean, yes. you're absolutely right. They were so good. So if you have not had a chance to uh, try some of the appetizer menus there at Los Alamitos, uh, in Burgers at Los yes. Alamitos, every single one mm -hmm. was uh, a single, a winner. Yeah. 
Yes. You know, that's, that's you know, the, the, a crowd favorite for sure. What so, do we get? We got Calabari, uh, Chicharrones. The um, nachos. Nachos. Uh, I think it was the, the chicken tenders as well. And yes. It was so good. Yeah. French fries. Yeah. Everything was good. The chicharrones were the highlight. Like, I that's a must good. get for me. That is absolutely. a must get. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And so, speaking of Burgards, we got to remind, remind fans that uh, Kentucky Derby Day is coming up, of course, Saturday, May 7th. And at Burgards, if you want to enjoy all the simulcast action on Kentucky Derby Day, please make a reservation. Please call 714-820-2680 and reserve your seat at Burgards. It's going to be a very, very popular spot to enjoy the races, enjoy the big Derby Day. And uh, we want to make sure that we get you in, uh, in the best seat possible on that big day. But you got to call. Call 714-820-2680 and make your reservations today. Yeah, it's coming up quick. Coming up quick. So uh, get, get your reservations there for Burgarts and also uh, the Vessels Club. That's All right. Cool. So, Orlando, uh, we got a terrific, terrific matchup in tonight's in Saturday night's card, specifically in race number four. This is a preview of a potential final, right? I mean, this has got to be. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it's all the big names are just about right there. Um, Sigur, Siguro, uh, actually the male leader in points. Danny Bob is the overall leader. She's yeah. a female. But number number one, as far as the males is concerned, Siguro is right there. He's going to start from the rail. But we have to say this is the toughest group that uh, he's faced right yes. at this distance. Without a doubt. And he... I mean, no doubt he's looked impressive in those, you know, two out of the last three wins. Uh, and he he should be able to say ground for this inside post. But look at he's facing. He's facing up the likes of Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk has been there in some very good battles. How about the new old name on the block? Yankee Professor. Remember once upon a time we're like, if he ever breaks at 400, he'll gallop out, right? And then he found a home at 550. He took the lengthy layoff. And now he does it, I feel. Look at that time, 51.74, Orlando, back on March 6th. Yeah, and, and if you look kind of in the middle of his past performance lines there, you see the Scott Lewis handicap, yes, the Paul Ford handicap, the Barbara B handicap, all those at 550 yards. And look at those uh, lines there. One, 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 one. I mean, that's all you see. He would break quick out of the gate, and no one was catching him late. at After 440, between that 440 and 500-yard distance, he just simply excelled and just had so much speed leaving the gate. So, uh, like you were mentioning, we you know we couldn't wait to see maybe a matchup between him and Ballast Point at 870. Uh, we didn't get to see it at a thousand yards. Ballast Point uh, since been retired, but Yankee has now made that leap forward, right? And now racing at a thousand yards. And his debut here at Los Alamitos, his local debut, because he ran a couple of races at that distance at Turf Paradise. On March the 6th, look how far ahead he was of the yeah. competition. Over eight lengths, Jose. So just flying, flying. Uh, pretty typical to what Ballast Point was doing when he was at the top of his game uh, and running at 1,000 yards. And this time, uh, Yankee held on to win by three-quarters of a length against King of Speed, a pretty solid runner. Uh, but once again, how far ahead is he going to be of that group? <laughs> yeah. How far you know, ahead is, oh, Jerry going to let Yankee get in front of him because it's going to be very tough for, uh, you know, Jerry to keep up, especially early. Yankee, like you said, we're talking about a horse that ran the champion of champions. They're running the winter derby. They're running so many big stakes races. They're not going to keep up with them early on. No, he's going to be all that. He's going to be up. He might not be up eight lengths against this group, but he'll probably be up five lengths against this group. Um we saw, I mean, oh, Jerry, what can we say about him? He's been ultra, ultra consistent. Whiskey, my God, uh, he looked impressive two starts ago, defeating a, a couple of stable mates, including Sigur Rose, who was in that race as well. He returns back to Los Castle Castlegate, when he's at the top of his game, Orlando, he can really fly. And it looks like he's getting to that top form. And that's when he's dangerous because he can close a lot of good ground late. And there's plenty of speed in this field to set up his late kick. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Because the thing about Yankee is that he did what didn't he like lug out a little bit around the turn in that he in lugged that in at the top of the stretch. He okay. lugged in. Yeah. So, you know, that's gonna be a, a, a kind of an interesting thing where you know, seeing how Yankee handles 
the term second time out here at Los Alamos in that at that position. And then maybe that's where O'Jerry kicks in. Maybe that's when Baby Gronk makes that move. We saw Baby Gronk defeated O'Jerry uh, earlier this year and caught him at the end. Caught him at yeah. the end in a race that O'Jerry re-rallied to take the lead again. And, and in the meantime, Baby Gronk from the outside gets to him first. So it's going to be a heck of a race. The track record at this distance is owned by Ballast Point, 51-67. And I think we have a chance here, the way that Yankee breaks and the way all these horses are going to go after him to maybe threaten that record. What do you think? And is, gonna, is it going to be a warm night? Warm night leads yeah. to pretty good times, Orlando. Given the heat wave that we're currently going through in Southern California, you might be right. This 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 time might be, might be a little bit shaky because uh, if Yankee runs as good as he did, uh, he, he might have a shot at it or any of these runners as well. But uh, I, I was going to say, Orlando, in that, remember that fifty thousand dollar final uh-huh. that O'Jerry won. There was Ballast Point in there, right? Right. Ballast Point went to the front. What did O'Jerry do? He settled yep. off the pace and he ran his fastest clock in that night in a, in the last few races. You know, he had run sub fifty two before, but that specific win fifty two nineteen was one of his better times from off the pace that night. Yeah, and that was another race where I believe Ballast Point also kind of had a little bit of our time yes. handling the turn right yes yeah so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting but uh how about when you when you can get a, a horse of a quality of baby grunk at eight to one that tells you how tough this race is right yeah baby grunk one of the few few horses that have been able to defeat uh oh jerry here uh capture the sea did it uh baby grunk did it as well and i can remember maybe early on uh, another horse may have done it as well. So uh, we actually had a chance to stop by the barn of trainer Brian Cunningham. My first opportunity to uh, interview uh, trainer Brian Cunningham, our leading uh, owner, it was Cunningham Stables back in 2020 as far as the thoroughbred division. So uh, it was a great opportunity to talk to uh, Brian Cunningham and meet the very energetic baby Gronk. I mean, Baby Gronk was feeling his oats that morning, uh, just having a fun time. So we got a chance to talk to Brian Cunningham and also meet Baby Gronk. Here's the interview. We're the racing stable of owner, trainer, Brian Cunningham, Cunningham Racing Stables, a big name here at Los Alamitos. A couple of years ago, the leading owner of thoroughbreds here at Los Alamitos and uh, always in the mix with the mixed horses, of course, the thoroughbreds. One of the big stars in the barn, Baby Gronk, right there. We taking a good look at this gamer, this terrific horse, and he's done a something that very few horses have done over the last uh, year and a half. He's been old Jerry, uh, just the one time, but uh, you know we, we we were pretty good game horses, you know, together. We we match up pretty well. You know, last time we tried to go head and head with them and. You know, we just we just couldn't have that constant, you know, that speed. And uh, you know, this time I think it will be a little different. And of course, he's gonna get to do it again this Saturday. It's one of our feature races of the weekend, and it's gonna be a heck of a field. Baby Gronk, or Jerry Siguros, and also a quarter horse by the name of Yankee, a really uh, fast, fast runner, a star at 550 yards. You're going at them. What's the strategy gonna be, Brian? Uh, coming from the two hole, I mean, we're just gonna. We're just gonna kind of play up, play the break, and let it be, and uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the horses are fast, so we'll probably, sit, hopefully, like third, and you know, make one run at them. Tell me about yourself. You've been uh, here at Los Alamitos for the last three years, just about, but mm-hmm. you've owned horses for 13 years, and your progression to uh, to reaching this point very unique. Uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. I uh, just started off with owning a tail of a horse and, <laughs> you know, little by little we, you know, we branched onto a whole horse and, and then all of a sudden I was a trainer and, and uh, it's just amazing. It's quite a journey and, you know, I love every aspect of it. It's just amazing. Uh, what's your background now? Where, where are you originally from? Uh, from the Pasadena area, okay. you know, went to the Santa Anita a lot, Del Mar. Um, you know, I had nothing to do with horses. I it was a military guy, and so just little by little, just I'm here now. 
Tell me about that background. You you mentioned the military background. Uh, I was in the Navy from for four years, and uh, you know, it's, went to the Persian Gulf, all that all that oh, good wow. stuff, and and uh, but now you know it's time to switch jobs. <laughs> uh, coming from that that part of the uh, the working world to now. Uh, what does this do for you, you know, being around the horses, being around animals? Oh, it's, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, these guys, I'm a, I'm a big animal person, and uh, these guys are, every day out here is a new experience, and I mean, just playing with them like this is just, you know, it's a good day. Your favorite horses? Any horse that, uh, that stands out? I'm assuming baby Grump oh, might be high on the list. Uh, I mean, this guy is amazing. Um, I've had some really good, you know, horses back in the days. I had a horse named Tasty Treat, um, undefeated at Del Mar, um, like a three, three ticks off the track record. Um, but this guy is probably my number one right now. What do you see the future for Cunningham Stables? Uh, just growing little by little, you know, I'm trying to trying to make something out of nothing and and uh, you know, hopefully get a, a new owner or two and someday and and just you know little by little and grow grow every year well you've made it into uh, the leading owner here at Los a couple of years ago so you've already reached you know a nice level a uh, very competitive level every time we see a Cunningham horse here uh, you know you have to pay attention and of course Baby Grunk here, trying to get a, a piece of you, trying to buy you a little bit, saying, hey, uh, we, feeling, we've done some good things here, Brian. He's feeling good. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I've been doing well, and I just like to keep up the momentum and, you know, try to try to make it, you know, every year better. Best of luck. Definitely best of luck on Saturday night. It's going to be a great race. And overall, a great addition to Los Alamitos Racecourse Cunningham Racing Stables. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thanks for catching up with Brian Cunningham, uh, owner and trainer. Like you can say he's had uh, some very good seasons here at Los Al, and he's uh, usually in the mix every single night here at Los Alamitos. So fun to catch up with Brian and also with Baby Gronk Orlando. Baby Gronk was feeling good, feeling good. Yeah, you know, it was fun looking back at California Chrome. Every time that we go, we would go visit California Chrome and you would try to, like, you know, pet him or anything, man, he he just wanted to take a chunk out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, he just wanted to bite, bite it. He he got me once, and that was, you know, that's like a, a badge of honor. You know, you, yes. get bit by, yeah. you get bit by California Chrome. And that's what baby Grunk reminded me of. You know, Brian Cunningham was, you know, playing with them and, mm -hmm. you know, just petting him and everything. And all, all baby Grunk wants to do is just – Get a nab at him, you know. Yeah. Just get a little chunk at him. So and now we know that that's that's what he's gonna want to do yes. on this big race. You know, he's gonna want to take a bite of the competition and just, you know, just eat up the ground and maybe get that upset victory. That's gonna be a fun race, fun race without a doubt. And it's, uh, Saturday night, race number four, the closeout leg of that early big four. That's that's a preview of a, of a good final because all of those runners are quality quality individuals. All right, so Mike Rona talked about the first race. Chris Wade talked about uh, talked about the last race. We talked about that key allowance event. Why don't we preview some of the baby races, Orlando? Baby races, we got three of them on Saturday night in races seven, seven, eight, and nine here on uh, Saturday. Yeah, and the, the first uh, baby race is going to be for Phillies, two-year-olds. Uh, got a nice group of them here. All of them making their debut, uh, mm -hmm. the seven of them. Uh Remember her. I think it's gonna be the the one to beat three to one on the morning line. Jackie's famous girl is actually the the uh, morning line favorite at five to two. Um, Loba from the number one post if, yeah. is a horse that I find interesting. It's gonna give you a decent price at seven to two. Uh, worked on April the second, and if we could show that work, Jose, this is a this is a runner by uh, Carlitas, horse yeah. that's had some uh, nice horses that have. You know, won some races out here, and she'll be working against bit better from the outside post. Uh, Loba's gonna go 12 7, the rival's gonna go 13 flat, and she had her head turn uh, towards her rival before the uh, the gates open here. All right, so here's here's Loba, and uh, you mentioned she was on the outside, right? Yes, so you can see right there, they're kind of looking at each other. 
There she goes. It's straight. And look the way she pops the gate nice and straight there. She was hustled right away. Just kept drawing away from here. Flag right-handed just to kind of keep her interested. And then right before the wire, the rider just stops asking uh, Loba for anything else. She's already done a good job that morning. We'll just let her cruise to the finish line. Nice, easy gallop out from there. But uh, I like the way that she just left the gate. Just yeah. popped the gate. And uh, that's that brought me, brought me flashbacks to last week because this jockey trainer combination, they had an impressive winner last, uh, from the rail last Chiquis. weekend. Yeah, yeah he's just straight as a string, broke fast, geared down. One of the most impressive winners, uh, two year olds up to this point. And not only that, was that winning time by his checklist is the fastest up to that point yes. that we have had since we started going 220 yards. I think the time was 12.01. And then on Sunday night, <laughs> that, that that was broken. Yes. Marcelo for uh, owner E.G. High Desert Farms and trainer Jesus Nunez. That horse went 11.96, I believe, uh, on Sunday night. So uh, we got some fast babies. Yeah, fast babies here. So that's Loba, the one we just showed. And I'm going to show Remember Her, who's going to be the number four horse on Saturday night in race number seven. Remember Her was on the inside of this two-team set here on March 22nd. And uh, also on this one, uh, you know, what caught my eyes, the way she was she was doing a lot of things fairly easily. She's going to break well, quick at the stride. And look at the rider, very quiet. The, the, there's not a lot of rain given in the head. So she's she's not wasting a lot of energy. She's still eager to go, and she pulls away very easily. I just like how professional she looked there, striding away, and a pretty good gallop out as well. 1280 for this uh, Philly by Kitty Up out of uh, Remembering Florence. Good gallop. Yeah, really nice flash there on that gallop out as well. So showed a nice quickness. Yeah. Got into her stride fast, like you mentioned, and then just maintained that quickness all the way throughout. So, yeah, it should be a good race. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, two horses to highlight there in race number seven. Race number eight, the second one. These are maidens. So we got Colts here and Geldings lining up 220 yards in this spot. We got a field of seven. And uh, let's see, who do you want to start with here? Beduino? Well, okay, let's start with Beduino, named after, uh, has, has the same name as one of the greatest sires yes. uh, of all time for quarter horses. Uh, Great horse by the name of Beduino. It was actually, I believe, a thoroughbred, had a very famous uh, match race in Mexico yep. with, um, I believe, the horse's name that uh, the, the match was Come Six in Mexico. It was a heck of a heck of a match race, very famous match race. And uh, Beduino, of course, went on to to sire Chicks Beduino. Mm -hmm. And Chicks Beduino has been a sire of all, all kinds of great, great horses. Uh, but let's take a look at number two. Beduino here from the outside post. There's actually a call by Fahrenheit, and not much to talk about Fahrenheit. Uh, he didn't run very much. He was out of a Mr. I opener mare by the name of Reason to Run. Uh, but the grand the grandmother of uh, of Fahrenheit was a greatest stakes place runner by the name of Mongoose Effort. So on the outside, there it is, Beduino with a nice solid drill. He stood pretty perfect uh, in the gate, came away sharply, grabbed the lead uh, out of, what, 25 yards into the work, and pretty comfortable ride all the way throughout. Yeah, I'm going I'm to run it back so we can take another look at the start there for Beduino on the outside. Uh, yeah, good, good, a little, maybe a little bit of a brush, nothing significant there, but he came out well, and he, you know, he, he begins to pull away here. Uh, pretty solid time of 1260 for Beduino. Yeah, nice, nice, easy, comfortable ride there by the rider. All right, so that's Beduino running gate number two. All right, next one, another one to preview here from this race is going to be uh, Time Flies. Time Flies Orlando was purchased for $240,000 at the Heritage Place sale of 2021 last season by this partnership. It was often rolling to good success. This has, has been a good ownership partnership for them. The, let's see how they... Do with this uh, Utah bread by a political just out of Little Surfer, and he was on the outside, right? Yeah, he was on the yeah, outside of this though. On the outside against Twiggy's favorite, a Philly. Uh, Times Fly is gonna go 12 6. Twiggy's favorite is gonna go 12 7. Uh, he was ready to go, he could not wait to get going. 
uh, fast out of the gate. You can see that he kind of broke in a little bit and bumped Twiggy's favorite. Uh, ran a little bit with his head sideways for a moment or so after the gap, but good rhythm late. And then he kind of got bumped a little bit by uh, Twiggy's favorite. Twiggy's favorite there, returning the the favor there yeah. on, uh, on time flies. But still, uh, overall, nice, easy, uh, final final half of a workout for time flies. So we did see that he was, uh, you know, he couldn't wait to get going, did bump the rival early on and uh, kind of had his head turned sideways just a bit. But we're talking about... Uh, a horse like you mentioned, two hundred and forty thousand dollars they paid for this runner. He's a sibling to the champion Uncle D, and also to top stakes runners Riptide and Call Me Cole. Call Me Cole, I believe, had the fastest qualifying time to the two million here, and uh, may have finished second in that year's two million. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think he might have. Yeah, he he was in the super. I think he was. Second, third, or fourth, <laughs> somewhere, if I remember correctly, third or fourth, something along those lines. Yeah, but he was in yeah. several green ones. Yeah, so he was in there. So there's two horses to highlight for race and rate. That is going to be Beduino and uh, Time Flies. And also, you can catch all these workouts at your own pace at losalimitos.com there at uh, from your uh, computer. All right, race number nine, the third and final two-year race for Saturday Night's program. 220 yards. Once again, we got a field of six runners in this spot, Orlando. Nine to five on Henry D from the inside. Another thing that's interesting about this race, we get to see a couple of horses returning to action, and both of them that ran pretty decently. Uh, yeah. Thames, the number four horse, ran second against Mass Interest. Mass Interest ran a nice race uh, in winning that that night. And the number five horse, Nomad 2, uh, showed nice quickness out of the gate, ended up fourth uh, against a pretty impressive runner by the name of I'm Born to Fly. I believe I'm Born to Fly. Uh, what was the time there? Twelve eighteen. So that was a pretty nice time for uh, for I'm Born to Fly. So a couple of returners and also some really nice first time starters. Let's take a look first at Henry D. One hundred and twenty two thousand dollar purchase at the Ridoso sale, Jose by uh, by KV and Corona. Looking forward to seeing this stallion. And now the, his juveniles do here at Los Alamitos this year. Yeah, sold for $122,000 at the Redoso sale. He was on the inside of this workout. Let me see. There we go. Inside of this workout. And he's a, he's a great like his papa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Breaks well. A little bit to the inside right there. He's going to level out nicely. Pretty powerful from there. Look at just the way that he just starts rolling. Nice, big size, good-looking horse. And he's just going to just take off with under no rush. The, the jockey's just letting him go down the lane. And a very strong-looking runner, very solid gallop out. This was like this was his second work as well, the first time he went 13-1. And here you see the nice improvement going 12-4. I got to tell you, he looked he looked much older than a two-year-old there. Like, he, yes. looked, he looked built. He looked with efficient strides. He looked like he was gliding and not using a lot of energy. He he just he just looked very very professional in that 12:40 workout. So, uh, best of luck to the connections. It looks like they have a nice promising two year old there. All right, let's take a look at uh the train station. The train station is one of the other first time starters in this spot, and uh, the train station, I believe, was on the outside of this drill, right? Yeah, outside horse and is sired by freight train B. And uh, it's going to work in tandem and evenly with Jackie's Famous Girl. We kind of briefly touched on Jackie's Famous Girl. She's going to be running in race seven in that group uh, of fillies there. And uh, here he, here she is, Jackie's Famous Girl on the inside, the train station on the outside. And train station fast out of the gate, floated towards the inside, even that at the gap under a pretty hustled right here but under a hand right as he finished ahead of his workmate by a head crossing the finish line he was hustled early on because it was a good uh good matchup between these two nice energy in the gallop out so let's a look at the train station there and uh and working on the outside getting up just as he approached the finish line 1274 that uh 
uh, freight train B gelding for the barn of Monte Rosa. And I want to bring up the, the past performances back on site here uh, because uh, we got two experienced runners, Orlando. We talked about how, you know, Thames comes out a pretty good effort. But let's, I wanted to mention that Thames has one of the most impressive half siblings that we've seen in the last season here, Los Al, London Toby, Orlando. I think the last time I saw London, remember, London won by like three or four lengths. Yeah, I think four lengths, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we haven't seen him race back. There's been a lot of, the, you know, uh, layoffs there, so obviously some setbacks. But, I mean, his, his half-brother is about as impressive of a runner as we've seen in the last couple of seasons here in Los Al. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, seeing him a little bit closer maybe to Champions Night, California Breeders' Champions Night. Uh, we have uh, some, I believe the uh, – Kawia bars coming up soon because he was entered to run the same night as the moon is handicap. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't have a chance to, to enjoy him running that night, but I, I am hoping to see him soon. So that's a look at uh, Thames there for the half saloon to London Toby and uh, nomad too. We talk about what circle city and nomadic in that family. So, I mean, these two runners with experience might, might stick another step forward based on their pedigrees that so definitely the experience uh, might be the advantage here. Yeah, and always like you know, kind of take a special look at those horses that are eligible to the kindergarten futurity, uh, because those trials are in a couple of week, couple of weeks, uh, April twenty fourth. Uh, in this particular race, there's East Down First, the train station, in Hayo Silver, uh, nominated to the kindergarten. You can see that by the K notation next to their name. All right, that's a look at the three three year old races for this uh, Saturday night on Los Alamitos and. We'll uh, take a look at see how these two-year-olds develop as we approach the first futurity of the season. We got the trials for the Robert A. There kindergarten futurity trials back on April 24th. So a couple of weekends away from those trials there as we get closer to uh, the first futurity of the season. Yeah, first post time on Saturday night for the 10 race program is 6.37 p.m. Of course, a big day at Santa Anita with the Santa Anita Derby going. They got a, several stakes races as well. So we'll start a little bit later on Saturday, 6.37 p.m. And on Sunday night, we have the running of the Dashing Folly Handicap. Uh, the Phillies and Mares back in action for the Dashing Folly. And this is, this is an interesting race because it's for, it's for uh, this staffers who have not won in 2022. So, uh, you know, some really nice runners are nominated i think college scandal was one of them el faba you can remember is another one you got seven of them nominated and uh one of them is going to become not only a uh, a winner for 2022 but in the case of some of those horses maybe a, a stakes winner that elusive uh black type for the phillies and mares maybe gets added college scandals already won some uh won a stakes race here at los south so a nice group yeah so uh looking i i've enjoyed following these ones duke it out right throughout the season. They, they kind of match up a few. One, yeah. one of them kind of skips the race. The other one comes back. So it's been fun to watch the series develop and unfold here uh, this season at Los Alamitos. All right. So we got the previews and uh, the, the updated post time a little bit later because of Santa Anita and their, their uh, featured card there. But looking forward to Saturday night and Sunday night as well. Uh, Orlando, anything else you want to share with the public or is that it? That, that's going to be it. Just remember, uh, Derby Day is coming up soon, so uh, make your reservations and join us here at Los Salamitos. The Vessels Club has great tables, a tremendous atmosphere on uh, on Kentucky Derby Day. And, of course, if you also want to hang out at Burgard's, mm -hmm. you know, also make your reservation, 714-820-2680. Get the Chicharrones. Get the Chicharrones at Burgard's. That is, that is money. I, I'm, I'm going to get the Chicharrones next time as well. Orlando, thanks so much for the all the information, and we'll see you out there this weekend at Los Angeles. Thanks so much, Jose.